Hello, up on all here, and I'm filming this on Anzac Day, which is quite an important day in New Zealand, Australia, and Turkey. I think elsewhere it's known as Remembrance Day, where we pay tribute to the fallen who fell defending their countries during the world wars and following wars afterwards. Which is why, in the running session of this video, um, I'm going to try and incorporate locomotives that would have served overseas, well, representations of them, anyway. Uh, either ROD or WD types. But this review is about a 3F. And no, not a Jinty 3F. No, 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 no. Of course not, of course not. I've already done that. Poorly, I admit, but still, no, not that one. It'll be this 3F, a Johnson 3F. Now, I've actually had a good look on YouTube and there is bugger all videos of these. So, I wonder why. Let's unbox it and find out. In a, I admit, stormy weather, so I may wear my headset so you can hear me in case the thunder goes. Okay, here we have the locomotive on the layout, ready for unboxing, and let's have a look at the product code. 31 627 LMS 3F 3205 in black, 21 DCC coder needed, sweet. Have a look at the back of the box, and you can tell this is a second hand model. I admit most of my locomotives are second hand, really. But yeah. Oh well. I'm actually, now that I think of it, the only locomotives I've bought new are my BI Blue A4, the ADF, semi regret, the Packets, the Terrier, the Princess Royal, and the J36. Those are the only ones I think I brought brand new for a what in the last few years, anyway. I could be wrong, I may have to go through my archives on this. But yeah, so, whew, that's a tight fit. Okay, before we have a look at that, let's have a look at the paperwork. Oh yeah, might as well have a look at this as well. This is a date stamp that you get in these boxes. That's 11.09.21. So, made the 21st of the 9th, 2011. And how I know this is a sink I learned from a collector. He told me this and I thought, are you kidding me? I did a little double checking on a few more models and he's right. Oh, excuse me, had to sneeze there. It's not a cold, it's not worse. It's just been a bit, doing a bit of cleaning and the dust is, it's intolerable. Dust or hay fever can make anyone sneeze, let's be fair. Not, uh, or if you're crazy and silly enough, snort a handful of pepper. Now, <laughs> now this is, oh, this is the running in, in instructions. So where to oil, where to take the body off. Oh yeah, that's quite nice. Also shows where the fitting is. Now we flip around. And that failed badly. <laughs> and here we have the exploded diagram. Tender vents according to model if tender has water scoop. Oh, that's quite cool. I don't know if this one has uh, water vents or not. I haven't bothered checking. But I find it's cool that a humble little freight logo like this would have water scoops. Wow. Because, well, they're smaller than the Fowler 4F. And even a Jinty looks big next to this, so, yeah, I don't know. Detail pack, oh, still taped on, so, for a second end model, well looked after. Okay, we got a free link in here, screws, and what looks like a speaker housing, and bugger all else. Two free links, screws, and a speaker housing piece. 
All right, nice. Uh, I'll just put that back where I got, got it from. So, oop, wrong way up. Right now, my fingerprints on the tape forever. There we go. I like to keep things kind of pristine, so bear with me on that. And as always, the tender is link with, linked with these models, so. Whoop. Okay. Puts the plastic away. <clears throat> okay. Okay, it's one of those ones. Okay, there's actually a fair bit of weight in this one. I like it. Now, this is actually quite nice looking. There we go. There we have the little tip 3F on top. Nice little cab vent. The coal rails on the tender are very nice. I like that. The detail is very nice. I like it. Uh, one or two imperfections, but second hand, I can't really gripe. Hmm? Hello. Looks like we're lacking a front coupler, but alright. I've got plenty of spare, so that's okay. Sprung buffers, nice. The wheel pickups look very good. Oh, very good indeed. As are the handrails. And the whistle and safety valves. They're cold. That's metal. Hold it properly up so that we can see it's... Uh, yeah, the tender link is like that. Yeah. Oh, boy. It's one of those ones, but the drop plate. I like that. It actually works. That actually works. That's cool. I like that. It's hinged. It's proper hinged. So, Alright, let's see if we can get the coal load off that. Because that's a, that's the thing about some of these models. Sometimes you can get, get them off a coal load that can come off. Some you can't. Is this one? Oh. Yes, it is. And, oh my gosh, that is heavy. It's got two lugs on it. Little baffles for when you chuck a speaker in, I guess? I don't know. Okay. Now I see what the lugs are for. You got two, three, four holes in the tender top. So, no real coal for this one. I wouldn't bother. This is pretty darn heavy, too. I'd probably just give this a dusting off and a spray paint job because, uh, yeah, it's a bit too shiny. I mean, a coat of matte black would not go on this, really. Or just, I don't know, give it a light spray of clear and just dump it in a container of coal dust. Just to dull it down, because, yeah, yikes. Apart from that, it looks alright. And when we had it upside down earlier, I did not see any sign of water scoop, which means no vents here is it. Well, so, bugger that. Okay, let's see how it looks on the layout. Anyway, well, rolling. Okay, and as per usual with these uh, little crawl tests, I have it facing the driver's side to the camera. And the only reason I can tell is because of the reverser rod, which is right here. So, just going to give her a little juice and see how it goes. But first, making sure nothing's on the rails elsewhere on the layouts. Just doing a quick walk around, looky loo to check. No, we're good. We're good. So, here we go. Give her a little juice. Hmm. That's odd. Maybe. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Okay. Bit of a jarring start, but no. If you're wondering what's with the glare, I made the mistake of opening the curtains. So I'm just gonna quickly Okay, that should probably help with the film a bit. Yeah, but yeah, the fact that I had to jolt it up to near fifty before we started off, that's annoying. So see how long I can turn this down before she stalls. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Oh, no, that's a very nice crawl. Which shows the mechanism is actually alright. 
if we can get a crawl like that, the mechanism is quite good. Now I'm going to slowly juice it up to 100, see how it looks. That's 50. And that's 100. Bit of rocking action, but actually that's quite good. Wow. Alright, slow back down again. Chuck in reverse, see what happens. Not bad. Pretty responsive. Which indicates no flywheel. Alright. Let's get her off the rolling road onto the track and see how it does from there. Okay, test on the rolling road is one thing, but you get zero resistance from it. And from it, no drag from the tender. So, let's see how we do now. Yeah, still did an annoying jerk start, but yeah. Not too bad. Not too bad, I guess. Not too bad. And it's not too bad, I guess. It's not too bad. Now, as to what I'll have it pulling. Uh, when I get on the main club lap, I have no idea yet. Could be a freight train, could be a local. Hey, you're all one with modern railways, mate. <laughs> but, we'll guess ha just have to wait and see. Now, I find that interesting. I just switched direction and it's still going forward. There we go. Now it kicks in to another direction, so. Just to show what I mean. Now that's going slow, right? I just switched it. Oh, there we go. Now it kicks in the other way. So, okay. That's, mm. yeah, that's not too bad, I guess. Well, as for how this logo we do on the club layer, we're going to see pretty shortly. Yeah, the dusty, I can tell you that much. Oh my goodness. But yeah, as to how I'll run it, I haven't figured that out yet. But like I said in the running earlier, uh, in the running session, I am going to incorporate locomotives that would have served uh, overseas during the war. Uh, both World War One and World War Two examples, I believe. It should be interesting. It should be interesting. And I'm doing examples in representation of locomotive classes, not the locomotives themselves. Just so we're clear. Okay? Because I'm saying that now to prevent getting nasty comments later on. Okay. To the club. Well, here we are at the model club layout with the free F ready to roll. And as I speak figured out keep it LMS with a local service now I actually will keep my word in running as well at wartime locomotives in the running session part of this because I feel it adds a nice bit of flavor to the video can't believe I said that and also well make something interesting really Oh, and keep an eye out for a certain coach as well. 
it's going to be a possible giveaway. That's right. I'm going to be having my first ever giveaway. But when? Who knows? I forgot how slow it was. Hello. Yeah, go on. Thank you. 